Okay, Coach, thank you. We are about 4,300 miles away from you there in Orlando as we come to you from the European home of the NFL, London, England. Coming up, another edition of the NFL International Series, and it should be a good one, between the Tennessee Titans and the Minnesota Vikings. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Mariota now to throw on first down. A 50-50 ball here, and it's intercepted. Mackenzie Alexander with a pick. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. The first carry now for Dalvin Cook. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. From the 29, Cousins looking middle, and it's incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver, and it's third down. The turnover put them in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You've got to cash in and get some points. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. They'll dump this off to Cook. Call it a three-yard gain, and it'll be fourth down. So Cousins heads to the Vikings sideline and on is Dan Bailey to try the field goal. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And Bailey able to knock it through. And the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. Weather like this, always treacherous for kickers. A good sign early, though, is he's able to put that one through. And you remember him right before the kick, stomping around his area to make sure that things were going to hold for his plant foot, and it did. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This one taken just inside the 10. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Out come the Titans now. Not the way they wanted to begin things. You had the interception on the first play of the game. The good news, it only led to three points. And remember our conversation with him prior to the ball game? He said they had something special designed for the first play. It didn't hit. Let's see if he can rebound from it and not let it get him down. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And the grab made by the tight end, Pruitt. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First down, Titans gain of 12. <laughs> I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And they're going to get about three here out of this first down run, and that'll bring up second and seven. Tackle made that time by Anthony Barr. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. He'll run it. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. Hey, 
Third and short yardage. Mariota into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Harrison Smith, and he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. It's a pickup of five, brings up second down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't go, matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. Cook following the penalty. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Brent Urban there to get him down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. They go play action. Cousins. And this one to Treadwell, complete. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 18 yards on his first catch of the game. It's a first down. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Plays like that, when you see the athleticism of a guy over 300 pounds, you, you forget that they can do that. They're so athletic. Yeah, and I love how it all came together. He won the leverage battle at the line of scrimmage. Then he won the battle with his hands to shed the blocker. And how about the agility to get into the backfield and run him down? A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action, throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. And a nice move will yield nothing as he's stopped behind the line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This is an easy one, 23-yarder. Bailey's kick is good. And that'll make it 6-0 here in the first. So scores on their first two possessions, but 6-0, so field goals probably not what they were hoping for. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. Not what they were hoping for, but they should be happy that they have points on the board. It almost feels like that old slow and steady wins the race, doesn't it? In this case, though, they want to be slow and steady now, but get explosive later and put the points up on the board. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This will be fielded at the 8. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. 
And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And it's been a miserable start for them offensively. Obviously, two drives, two interceptions. And this is where you have to know your quarterback and know how you actually have to reach him. Do you do it with a little bit of humor? Maybe you break the ice a little bit like, hey, didn't we practice in that color jersey all week, not the one that you're throwing it to? Or maybe you have to be stern with him. But whatever it's going to take to get the message, it has to be done. He's putting the game in jeopardy. Now he'll pull it down. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir, able to turn that into a positive game. To throw again on second down. Mariota, it's caught. Humphreys. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. A gain of two on the play. Brings up third and four. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Working out of the gun, Mariota. He finds Humphreys. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First down, Titans gain of 12. Third and four is always a tough call. Maybe a little too long to run for it, but not too long to hit him on the quick slant. And that was well executed. Found the window and zipped it right in there. Off play action to Henry. Here's Mariota. Sliding out of the pocket. He'll try and run it. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. The last drive, remember, similar situation. He forced a ball into coverage through the pick. He learned better there. Yeah, similar to a golfer that's confronted with a shot that you just can't make. Sometimes you have to take your medicine, as they say, right? Just pull it down, take off, and go. Don't make something worse than what it was. Running jet sweep here, Humphreys. And the ball is knocked out, and the Vikings pick up the football. And he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. To throw his Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, yeah, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Picked up by the USC man, Adoree Jackson. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he's going to score. It's a Titans touchdown. Ah, yes, the old tip drill works to perfection there. Ah, you're bringing back great memories. You used to love that drill. And a lot of times in practice, you work on it not just one tip, but multiple tips, just in case the ball stays in the air for a while, to have an awareness and the ability to go up and grab it. And then you want to get some blocking support and end up in the opposite end zone. In that tip drill, do you, what do you yell? Uh, for, for, for us, it was Oski, okay? Oski was an interception. Different, team. different teams have different ways of doing it. I've heard bingo, jackpot. The worst I ever heard, though, was Frankenstein. You don't want it to be a three syllable words. Yeah. You, want, you want to get it right down and go. Oski is really the preferred word. Oski.
So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And out now come the Vikings. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Back to it after the pick six. Cousin, he completes it to Treadwell. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Cousins gives way to Cook. Cook stripped, the ball's out. It's picked up by the Titans. And the possession is theirs at their own 43-yard line. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. And it's a fumble. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They start the drive with Cook. He'll be stopped shy of the 45 despite a great move. Gets a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? To throw on second and six, Cousins. And he's got the hook up here. It's Kyle Rudolph. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Ten yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. To throw, Cousins. Oh, he's able to out-muscle him here as he pulls it in. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. On the ground, it's Cook. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 12 more yards there and another first down. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But I also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. After one, a one-point game, 7-6. to six. They'll run with Cook, and they'll get this from the 8 to the 5. Pick up a 3. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. And the ball smacked down on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Throwing, Cousins, and Thielen's got it. Touchdown, Vikings. Four yards on the touchdown grab, and the Vikings are going to retake the lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet 
or they just executed better? Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it works very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up just past the 20, and his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Bring it. Bring it. Swing it. Mariota gives to Henry. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. What happened there? Was that just a missed assignment on the O-line? It certainly felt like it, but also the speed of the play. When you talk about defensive end, they want to be ahead of the clock, don't they? They want to be upfield, making plays on every snap. How about his agility there to run that one down? Rolling to his right, and now he's going to use his... It comes, and he lost the football. Mariota had it jarred loose, and the Vikings pick up the football. Mariota now after the fumble recovery. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Minnesota. And thus far, the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach. And we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? We said, hey, have you prepared for this? And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, I don't think it's going to slow us down much. We tend to handle it pretty well, and he's been right. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. After the incompletion, hey, hey. here's second and 10 from the 20. Hey, tight, tight down, tight down. There you go. Check 52. <laughs> Cook. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. The Vikings on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and eight. Cousins now setting up the screen for Cook. And he loses the football a second time. But this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. I don't know about you, but I could hear 
and feel the sigh of relief all the way up here in our booth. That yeah, was palpable. The sideline, the friend there. No doubt about it. Ball goes over the sideline, able to retain possession. No turnover. <laughs> I know his coaches are screaming. Just hang on to the ball, man. First down. Here's the run with Cook. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Play action now, Cousins. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, but now it's third down. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. The Vikings on third down, two for five to this point. This will be third and five. Cousins. Now they go screen, it's complete. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. They go play action here on first down. He's got Smith here. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Now Cook. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Cameron Wake makes plays like that look simple because I think he plays with excellent leverage. Really does a nice job of being lower than the offensive guys trying to block him. He gets underneath them and goes up and down the line of scrimmage to make those types of plays. And kept him to a short run play there. Now Cousins. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Jarrell Casey with a little how do you do as he gets in there for the sack. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and, try and think with them here. Try to play field position, maybe. Turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Up at the 29 now. They'll head to the line. Second and a yard. Big stop, big stop. Let's go. Mariota hands to Henry. Pushing through the contact. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop him behind the line. He lost two there, and it's third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Switch up, switch up. One up, one up. Mariota from the gun on third down. They'll roll him out right. He can run for it, and he will. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Mariota had an 87-yard run as a rookie. This one a bit less, but it is a first down. Now 
Now a carry for the shifty Deion Lewis. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past Let's the go, 50. First down, Titans gain of 12. Partner, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for them. Show them that you're supposed to get the football. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 46. So that'll back him up five. Let's go, baby. Let's go. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Now the ball comes loose, and the Vikings pick up the football. There he goes, left side. And they're going to bring this one back. It's a fumble return, a scoop and score for the Vikings. Fumbles, that's how you get in the coach's doghouse. The first one lost, and it hurt. This time you lose it, and it's taken in for a score. It really hurt. And about that doghouse, it won't exactly be comfortable, and it definitely won't be air-conditioned. Milk bones? None. A good hold in these wet conditions. The point after is up and good, and the lead now stands at 13. So here's the kickoff now as they'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. And this not an easy situation. You're down early in the elements. You're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. When you lose that kind of yardage on a pass play, you often expect it to be a sack, but that wasn't the case there. They completed the pass. Probably would have been better off just dropping the football and making an incompletion as opposed to catching it and losing that kind of yardage. On second and 15 now, Mariota, and he hits the running back, Deion Lewis. And he'll be out of bounds near the 30. In fact, right on the 30. A gain of 10 makes it third and five. The Titans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. From the gun, Mariota. And that will be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. On is Kern, the punter, to send this one away. It'll go as a 50-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Vikings will take over here, first and 10. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. 
Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. A give to Cook out of the gun. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down from the gun here's Cousins open man is Thielen it's complete and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line 10 yards and it's good for a Viking first down I don't care how many times we see it I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm up but I always remember that when we go to practices we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Oh, boy, partner, did that just happen? I've got my hand over my eyes right now because, like, like him, it's going to haunt my dreams, too. He was wide open. How did he overthrow him there? Uh, defensively, just very lucky. You know that they got away with one there. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. It was a safety, Kevin Byard that time, who was able to knock it away. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick, but able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he's able to bat it away. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. The touch and time here critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. Here's Matt Wild now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And a first half that really has not been kind to them, a late opportunity here to maybe make some inroads on this deficit before half. And this drive's going to go a long way towards telling us whether they actually have a chance to come all the way back in this game or not. A first down throw for Mariota. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and ten from the 20. Let's go, let's go. Check, check 43. Mariota. And this one caught by Delaney Walker. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. So first and 10 now from the 30. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. He finds Taylor, complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A well-executed 22-yard gain. First and ten, here's Mariota. He's going to let this one go deep. 
That's caught inside the 20. Now Tennessee going to go. use the second of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. single score. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Extra point put through by Suckup, and that will get them one closer. Now it's Ryan Suckup on after the touchdown to kick it away. This will be fielded at the 8. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. You're under a minute to go here in the half. Field position not really in your favor, but still time to try and move the ball and get in field goal range. Yeah, you've got the lead. It's a, definitely a thought. Let's go ahead and try and increase it. But at the same time, I don't like the odds. I don't like where they are on the field. Got the lead. They've done well in the first half. Don't mess it up and go into halftime looking at each other wondering what if. And a pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Daquan Jones fighting his way home to get the sack. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football... It... And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with the pressure. Maybe that was for the best as that brings us to the end of this first half of play. So we have reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break. As it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida, and check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, as they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters, as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. First down, here's Cousins. Complete, Smith has it. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. That's a gain of five. Brings up third and one. Yeah. 
They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee. And that means fourth down. Give him a yard on the play, and he's definitely short. It'll be fourth down and a few inches. Here's Matt Wild now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Out come the Titans now. They'll have it first on offense to start the third. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use use to something to get you off to a quick start so not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard they keep it on the ground this time it's Henry and they'll take him down at the 31 yard line two yards good enough for a first I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. On second down, here's Henry. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and ten. Off play action to Henry. Here's Mariota. He'll buy some time right. Hit comes, and he lost the football. Mariota had it jarred loose. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Throwing again on second down. Mariota. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 36. Mariota now 11 of 16 through the air. It's first and 10. Here's Mariota. Sliding out of the pocket. He's going to take off with it. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. Derek Henry. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. On third down, Mariota. He may try and run for this. And oh, he caught it up, and the Vikings pick up the football. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. 
Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. They get 14 there. First down, Vikings. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On the carry, it's Cook. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And his carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action. But other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. On second down, Cook. And a solid run down inside the 30. It'll be a gain of seven, and they get it back to a third and three. Well, there's an example of patience being rewarded. Ran the ball on first down and got stuffed. Most people would scream, throw the ball here in this situation. They stayed with their roots, stayed with running the football, and they got rewarded. Third and short yardage. Cousins looking for the end zone. And that'll be incomplete. Well, they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty. And it's fourth down. Well, that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. Yeah, and on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And it bangs off the left upright and deflects away. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So plenty of leg, but it's the accuracy there that lets him down. Yeah, he hit it really well. I think this might have been good from 55, but you'll see it just conk off that upright, and they're denied a chance at three points. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They begin with Henry. And yeah, this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in, he's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's... And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off by the former first-rounder, Trey Waynes. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Yeah, they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive. Missed field goal. Always hurts a team because, you know, you've put something out there. You've given yourself a chance. You're in range, and the ball doesn't go through the post. But it's not something to panic about, I don't believe. Just keep playing and keep going. Anytime the offense shows what they call a shot play or a chunk play where they're trying to get big yardage, sometimes people just call it gadget plays, and you hold it to a game that we just saw there, you feel pretty good about yourself as a defense. On second down now, it's Cook. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now a run with Cook. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. On 
second down. It's Cook. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game, and while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And he's able to find Diggs. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. Cousins now 6 for 6 since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. Here's a run on first down that won't even get back to the line of scrimmage. He will lose a yard, second and 11. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to come back to you. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Again, it's Cook. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. A gain of five. It's fourth down. And no move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. Now Cousins on fourth down. And that is it. Complete. Mike Zimmer got to be unhappy with how that turned out. And as a result, it'll be Titan football on the turnover on downs. Boy, you talk about not playing it safe. Why were they going for it there, Charles? It's got to be a full evaluation of their team. Do they trust their defense in this situation? Maybe they think they've given all they can in this game and they don't have anything left. Do they not trust that the other team's quarterback is just so hot that it, no matter where they get the ball, they go downfield. Hit Collins, and he lost the football. Mario to head it, jarred loose. And the Vikings pick up the football. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. They run, Cook. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around <laughs> campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach, he's in big trouble. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. On first down, Cook. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. 
And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Open man is Treadwell, and he's got it for the Minnesota touchdown. Eight yards on the touchdown pass. And the Vikings capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor in effect. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. The former Pro Bowl linebacker Anthony Barr there to jar it free. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. To throw is Mariota. And an alley to run. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. The Titans on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and four. Working out of the gun, Mariota. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Mariota now. He's got his man sharp, complete. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Throw it, Mariota. And Walker has it. And he'll get it down on the plate of the 37. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Mariota now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Mariota again. That's complete to Sharp. 
And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Give him 16 yards there, a Tennessee first down. That's another Titans first down. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. Round 18. Mariota to Lewis on the draw. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive, and here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Throwing on second down. Mariota, and it's caught. The Titans efficient passing on this drive. There's another first down. First and goal, and they gotta be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll try and run for it with Henry. And he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Taking it in from a yard out as his guys are back within a single score. We well, got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space, but how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pad? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people to power his way forward. Extra point up and good by Sucka. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Now it's Ryan Suckup on after the touchdown to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Play action now. Cousins. Blitz coming and down he goes. Cameron Wake with a little wake up call as he gets in there for the sack. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. Now Cousins. And that is incomplete. And sensing the momentum maybe changing here a little bit, Charles. Yeah, this defense is going to get off the field quickly, and their offense got them a touchdown last time they had the ball, so they should get another shot. Here's Matt Wild now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away.
A 41-yard punt there with no return, and it'll be Titan football. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Mariota to throw. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. The defensive end, Daniil Hunter, drops him. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Mariota. And he'll hit his tight end, Walker. And he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. There's a good push to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands, speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Now Mariota. He can run for it, and he will. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own, but as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you, and if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. And that's complete to Lewis. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. First and ten at the 48 yard line. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. From the gun, Mariota. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. One of his main targets, Delaney Walker, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Mariota. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. To the air again, Mariota. And an alley to run. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 34-yard line. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy. Make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. Throw Mariota. He gets this into the hands of Taylor. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and the Vikings pick up the football. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And this one now not quite over yet. Still two timeouts remaining defensively. And boy, having that third timeout would have really helped here. Yeah, another example of why coaches really stress saving your timeouts for when you absolutely have to have them. They go over this all the time. Here's one of those situations. They run again on first down. Cook. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Uh 
And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Handoff comes to Cook. And he's able to get this one down to about the 40. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Second down now. It's Cook. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Another good run for him. What else is new? That'll put him right at 150 yards for the game. So he's really made his presence felt in this one. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he picks up the first before he's taken down go, at the go. 29. Go. It'll go as a gain of nine, and that should write an ending to this one. And that's the type of run that they're looking for because they'll need to continue to rely on him to move the sticks in this tight game in order to preserve this lead. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Cousins just going to take this one down to a knee and end it. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly. Wise beyond his years. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.